Hello coaches. This has been an interesting uh, start to the season. Normally I would do this coach training in person, uh, but since uh, everything that's been going on, I thought it would be best to do it this way. And then you can uh, learn all this stuff. And when we're ready to start the season, we can jump right in uh, whenever that might be. Uh, we are just waiting for the state to approve um, sports. And once they say it's okay to do that, we are gonna jump right in uh, with our season and I'll be sure to let everyone know uh, as soon as that happens but for now to do this training uh, thank you so much for being willing to be part of this season um, those that are new and those that are returning uh, coaches uh, I appreciate you very much you are what makes this season possible and we're very glad to be a part of the family with you uh, hopefully by this point you've picked up your orange uh, coach packet one of these every coach gets one I try to put a lot of information here you'll need. I try to over communicate rather than under communicate. Uh, so you'll have all the resources in this you'll need for the season. And I'll talk through a little bit of it today, uh, covering substitutions and the main thrust of our season. And then when it's nice outside, I'll go outside and cover some more of the practical aspects of coaching soccer and the proper methods we can use in, in teaching these skills to these kids. Uh, but for today, I wanted to start with um, the packet there. And before we get too much further into this, I'd like to pray with you. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, soccer. Thank you for Oakfield Baptist Church. Thank you for these coaches uh, willing to give their time away from their family to be a part of this league. We thank you, Father, that uh, because of your son, Jesus Christ, not only can we uh, know you, but we can know what your word has to say about our life here and what we can do to glorify you in all that we do. And I pray that as we teach these kids the skills they need to be competitive in soccer, that you'd help us instill in them the biblical values they need to do well in every area of their life, that they might come to know you if they don't already, and that through this league, Father, lives would be changed, families would be changed, and that people would come to uh, know and appreciate you and have a relationship with you. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity we have to do this soccer season. Do pray that you'd help keep us all safe throughout the season. And we just look forward to uh, glorifying you, Father, through sports here soon. We thank you, Father, for this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. This is the packet you'll all get. Um, if you are coaching with another person, uh, you may just have one packet. Um, if you have, uh, you'll have at least one for every team you coach. So. Starting on the inside cover, what you've got here is a little envelope. Inside there is a captain's armband. We'll get to that later. And verses. So this is the uh, most important part of our league, and I'll touch on that in a moment. But these are all the verses you'll need for each of your players for the entire season. This is your one captain's band you will need for the entire season. Um, you'll give it out before the game and get it back after the game. And then when the season is over, uh, you will award it to uh, the overall captain for your team. The next page you have on there is your roster. These are the players that are on your team. Uh, we've done, uh, we've worked very hard to uh, try to make teams even this year. Um, that's our first priority. The second priority is meeting the, um, the day of the week that the family cannot practice. We also try to keep all families on the same night. So if you have multiple kids, you only have to come one day a week. But this is the information for each player. You've got allergies on there. You've got cell phone contacts. You've got emails. Um, the bold phone number on there is the, the best way to contact them or text them. That is their texting number. Uh, you also have addresses. If for some reason you need uh, somebody needs a carpool, that's a great way to uh, figure out who lives close to them. You also have birth dates. If their birthday is in the middle of the season, feel free to celebrate that. And the next page you have on here is uh, page two, the game format. Uh, we do a progression for our kids um, based on skill level. So we don't expect that much out of the four-year-olds and kindergartners. So the, the expectations are pretty basic. But as you get grow up in our league and graduate in our league, each year it's going to be a little more we're going to expect from you. By the time you get to the high school level, uh, we expect you to know all the rules and um, be able to follow them and understand the basics of the game. 
Uh, we always try to prepare them for the next level, whatever that might be, whether they want to play on at the next level or not. We want to make sure they have the skills and information to do that. So these are the basic uh, structure of each game and how the format will work. And when I get outside in a future video, I will show you on the field um, which field you're using and how that will work uh, with a the visual there. So if you turn the page um, to page three, these are going to be rules. I will also go over these when I'm outside later. Page four is more rules. Uh, you'll find this is a great resource um, when you do your practices to teach the kids the rules of the game. I try to go in depth about each rule. Uh, some of them are basic, some of them are not. If you've played soccer before, uh, they should be pretty familiar to you. What we're going to focus on today, though, is on page five, substitutions down there. And this may be backwards for you guys on the screen, but substitutions at the bottom of page five. This is one of the areas that makes our league unique. Um, we started off with Upward Sports, and uh, it was a great program. And we've adopted some of their, their tools uh, for our program, and one of them is the substitution uh, format. And it's designed to ensure that each player gets the same amount of playing time. Um, every player will get equal time throughout the game and the season. It's a guaranteed format. As long as they are there and show up, then they will get the same amount of time as everybody else. Uh, we don't play by skill in this league. At no point will you look down the bench and see who is better and who needs to go in and who doesn't need to go in. Uh, it's a guaranteed format. Every player will start throughout the season. Um, and it works out very well um, for each kid's skill level. So one of the things you're going to want to do, um, your very first practice, even maybe your second practice, is you're going to want to identify uh, the kids on your team that understand soccer and do really well with their skills and the ones that are developing. Uh, and you're going to rank them privately. Um, this is the information we share with them. This is the information we share with the parents. This is just something you do as a coach uh, to rank your players from top to bottom. Now, this in no way should dictate how you coach them uh, as far as you know, putting more time into the good players or worse players. What this does is this ensures that on the field, there are players of equal skill at any time in the game. So um, you're going to rank them from A through G or um, however you have on your, your however many players you have on your team. You're going to rank them all the way through that. And this is your private way of, of uh, understanding the skill level of your players, but more importantly, making sure that when you are playing another team, they're doing the same thing and uh, equal players are going to be playing each other. So the A players are going to be playing against other A players. Uh, a top player is never going to be playing against um, the worst player in the league. So we keep that to keep it close to keep it fun and allow it to be a great experience for everyone. So you're going to rank them that first or second practice based on skill. And um, that's going to be the order they're going to be in for the rest of the season. So it's great if one or two kids really start excelling. Uh, keep that order the same. So your A player is always going to be your A player. Your B player is always going to be your B player. And C all the way down. A is going to be the best player in your team. Um, G... Uh, is going to be the worst player on your team. Um, this is it's nothing to do with uh, wanting to feel bad about them or good about them. It's just a way to rank them by skill so that we can keep the competition even on the field. So you're going to fill out your chart with the names A through G there, and you see that on page uh, 6 a little bit. Uh, the player A, player B, all, all the way down. Uh, those are going to be your players on your roster. Uh, so you'll rank them based on skill and they will always be that ranking throughout the season. And then what you'll do when it comes to game time is you will see who is there. And we try to ensure and instruct each player to be there early for games so that you can see them and get this chart filled out. Um, when this chart is filled out, you don't touch it again the rest of the game. You quickly look down for the next sub break, see who is supposed to go in, and they go right back in. As a general rule, you will clear the bench every uh, substitution break. But step one is to get the players in order by skill. Uh, step two 
Before that game, once you see everyone is there, you will then mark off on your chart all the substitutions for the game. So if you play three on three or four on four, uh, you'll mark an X next to A, B, C, and D. Those will be your starters. At the first sub break, you'll start at E. E, F, G, H will go in then. So it's very simple. Um, so step one is make sure they're in order, and the same order will be the same all season long. Game one, you'll start with A, and A through D will be your starters. If you have five players that are playing, it's if it's five on five, it'll go through E. If it's 11 on 11, you'll go through J or K, uh, whatever number that is. But you're going to mark off before the game even starts those starters. And the first game is going to be A through A through D. You're going to start with A. Uh, the next sub break, which is either five minutes in or 10 minutes in, uh, depending on the group, uh, you will start at the next blank. So if you did A through D that first set, the next sub break is E through H. So A through D is going to come sit down. E through H are going to go out on the field. And for some of you, this is going to be very easy. If you only have eight players in your team, you are just going to keep switching back and forth, back and forth, um, just clearing the bench. It would be really easy for you. Um, if you've got a team where you're playing eight on eight and you've got ten players on your team, it gets a little more complicated. But the way this will work is the first four will go in the first for starters in game one. Um, the second, the first break at, at five minutes will be E through H. And then when you get back to um, the next break, it'll start at the next line and go from there. So I think your sheet here on page six goes by 11 v 11. So you'll see the first first uh, starters, they have 11 X's there, and then they've got a blank. So they've got 12 players in their team. The next at five minutes, you'll start with number letter L, go back up to A, and then back down to J. The 10 minute mark, you'll start at K and then L and then go all the way back to A and then back down again. For the 15 minute mark, you'll start at J, go all the way down to L and then back from A again. Um, the more players you have, uh, the more complicated this gets for you, but the basic premise is the same. Um, you are gonna start um, with the next letter that isn't in the game and you're going to go down. Uh, so I know that might be a little confusing. It gets very simple as the season goes on. And if you've got an even split on your team, it'll be very easy to do. But for week one, you start with A and work your way down to all the starters on your team. And then the first sub break, you clear your bench. Those people go in. Uh, next sub break, you switch it back again. For game two, you start at letter B. So A is going to sit game two. Your starters will be B, C, D, and E. But you run the same chart the same way. So you'll start at B, go down to E. Your next sub break, you'll start at F, G, and H, and then you put in A if you only have eight players. And you just keep cycling through uh, your list that way. And when you get to the end of your list, you go back up to the top and start down again. Uh, so I'll try to simplify it here. The step one is put all your players in order. That's the order they'll be in the entire season. Step two on game day, uh, your first game, before the game even starts, all your players should have come to you and told you that they're there. And then you will, before the game starts, fill out your entire substitution chart for that game. Starting with your starters, for game one, you start with A and go down, whoever many starters you have, playing 4 b four on four or five on five or 11 on 11, uh, you'll fill that all the way out. Your next sub break, you will start with the first person that didn't play and go down and start at the top again and work your way back down again. And you'll do that for each sub break all the way through the game. Um, this ensures equal time for everybody. Um, and if not in that game, then absolutely throughout the season. This also ensures that every player gets to start a game. Uh, so that would be guaranteed. Now, a few things that might um, disrupt your chart. If someone is not going to be there for the game and you know they're not going to be there for the game, you skip over them on the chart. So if, for instance, uh, you're going four on four and it's your first game 
and your B player is missing. You will start A, C, D, and E. Those will be your starters that game. And then the next round will be F, G, H, A. And then the next one will be C, D, E, F. You're just going to skip B throughout the entire game, but just keep rotating through it. If someone's supposed to be there and they're not there yet, by the time game starts, you skip over them. But you're going to have to keep redoing your chart as they come. So when, if they show up two minutes into the game, they don't just get thrown into the game. They come at their next scheduled sub break. So they'll go in the next time when you clear the bench. It gets a little more complicated. It's much easier if they come on time or they let you know they're not coming at all. If someone gets injured, you can sub anybody in for them. Uh, it doesn't matter who you sub in for them. Uh, they will complete that sub break for that person. And then the next sub break, you go right back to your chart. If the person you subbed in happens to also be the next one that would go on the field, they stay out. Um, it works very easily. If the injured person um, isn't in the next sub break, that's fine. Uh, the next sub break that they have, that they are scheduled to go in, that is when they go back in the game. It's not to penalize them. It's just to ensure that the kids are getting equal playing time uh, throughout it. Um, another thing, let's see, I'll make sure I got it on there. So game one, you start with A. Game two, you start with B. Game three, you start with C. Uh, we have six games throughout the season, which means everyone in your team will get to start a game. Uh, for the older kids, you're going to have goalkeepers. Now your goalkeeper, if you only have one person that wants to be goalkeeper, you can take them out of the sub lineup and just keep them as the goalie there. So if you're playing 11 on 11, uh, including your goalie, then you would only do your rotation for the 10 players at a time because your goal is going to be that 11th player and they're always going to be in. Now, if you have more than one person that wants to be goalie, you're going to have to include them and rotate in and out your goalies. Uh, that's fine. Uh, make sure you do that. I would even include, uh, encourage everyone to learn each position, especially at this age. Um, it's, it's good for them to know it. If you want someone to come along like me and teach them how to be goalie, I'd be happy to do that uh, during a practice or maybe even a special day during the week and, and get everyone in the league to do that. I've done that in the past for our league. I've coached a lot of goalies in the past. Um, one of the many experiences I did as, as a goalie in high school and a little bit in college. But I'm much better coach than player. And I've been coaching since I was 16, 15. So a long time, but I'd be happy to do that. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have on coaching or methods or soccer in general, or really anything in general. Um, but goalkeepers, you're going to keep out of the mix. Um, if you don't have, uh, if you only have one goalkeeper, if you have multiple people that want to be in goal, um, that's fine. Um, just make sure you're rotating your goalies in and out and they can go on the field too. Um, so if, if you only have uh, 13 players and you're playing 11 at a time, include everybody in the rotation if you have more than one goalie and just pull that person into the goal when, it's, when they're out on the field. But rotate them throughout. Some players only want to be goalie. Um, if they're the only one that wants to be goalie, that's fine. If uh, they only like the goalie position but you have more than one goalie, they're going to have to play some field time. I think it's good for them to get out there and do that. It's good for that perspective of that player to see what it's like on the field. And it's good for uh, the person when they go back in the goal. Um, that is most of the substitution chart. As I said, you're going to fill that out um, before the game starts, if at all possible. And um, that order you set before the first game is the order that's going to be for each player throughout the season. Uh, so make sure you pay attention to that. I think I've detailed it in the notes fairly well, but if you have questions, please let me know. Uh, my email and phone number is on the front cover of your packet. And uh, you can email or call me anytime. And I'd be happy to help you with any questions. The other thing that's in this, this packet, uh, that is the number one thing of our league, is the Bible devotions every practice. So if you only do one thing in practice, make sure you do the Bible time. 
It's important to our league. Families look forward to it. Parents look forward to it. I will hear if you have skipped it. Um, kids tell me they look forward to hearing these things. Parents tell me um, it's an important part of our league, a very, very important part of our league. Uh, so make sure that happens there. And we try to structure the verses in such a way that you will apply it to everything they're doing in sports and in life. Um, you have three verses that you're going to teach throughout the season. Every two weeks, you'll, you'll give them a new verse to memorize. You have in your packet uh, written pre-written devotions that I wrote together. You don't have to use those. Uh, but if you're in a crunch and just want to read it, or you don't feel competent in your, your Bible exposition, uh, you're happy to just read straight through what I've given you. Um, if you uh, if you come across a passage and it's your favorite passage and, and you can teach it more than me, better than me, I, my feelings won't be hurt. Please do that. But the emphasis needs to be that you need to be doing uh, the, the devotional time, the Bible time with these kids. Um, you just huddle them up. It's a good time to do maybe in the middle of your practice. Give them a little bit of a breather and explain to them what we're doing during this time. They need to, you're going to give them the memory card that is theirs to keep. It can be turned in at the concession stand. Once they memorize it, they can take it to the ladies in the concession stand and uh, earn a free um, piece of candy if they have the verse memorized. They can memorize any version of the Bible they want. I know we have some, some families that prefer King James Bible. That's fine. Um, I've tried to pick versions that are easy for each age group to memorize. So um, whatever Bible version you're comfortable them using, that's fine. Just be consistent with that Bible version. Uh, I don't want you switching in between versions with the same verse. Um, and you can just tell the ladies at the concession stand what version you're memorizing. That's fine. It seems like my glasses are a little crooked today. But each uh, each week, game week, during, during the games, they can turn in their verse for a piece of candy. Um, the verses are also important for captains. That is the number one requirement to be a captain. You have to memorize the Bible verse for that week. Uh, they can all be memorized by the players. Uh, my kids are... I've got a three-year-old or a four-year-old. Three-year-old's going to be four during the season this year, and he can memorize it. And I've got twins that are seven years old, and they've memorized them every year they've done this. So they can be done. Those that can't read are going to need the help of their parents, but it can be done. If you push it and expect it from them, they'll do it. And we, and we want them to do that. So encourage them to memorize these verses. Take them home. Uh, if they want to be captain, they have to memorize the verse for that week. If it's a new verse for the next week, they have to know the new verse for the next week. But that's the number one requirement to be captain. Um, if they, no one on your team has memorized a verse, no one gets to be captain that day. Uh, if multiple people have memorized the verse for that week, uh, then it's up to you to step it up a little bit as far as the requirements. So number one is memorize the Bible verse. Number two might be perfect attendance and they're on time for everything. Uh, number three might be, you might say, can someone help me pick up the balls? Some of them are going to run out there and try to get all the balls. Others are going to sit down and not do anything. That can be a way to distinguish between those that deserve to be captain and those that don't. Those that are helpful in listening. You can set your own criteria after memorizing the Bible verse, but memorizing the Bible verse does need to be step one. Um, these kids will memorize these verses if you help them do it. Um, and one, way, one of the ways we do that is throughout the practice, and this is the first year we're doing this. And you can kind of see this on uh, page nine of your book. Is a keep it going session, section at the very bottom. A keep it going section. So this is a way for you to use that Bible verse throughout the practice. As many times as you can say it and incorporate it into what you're doing, the more the kids are going to learn and grow and apply that verse to their life. Uh, so you're going to see as many times as you can say this during practice included in the rules you've got um, you know the first week we have or second week we have second timothy 3 16 all scriptures god breathed and useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training in righteousness that fits very well as you teach the kids um, the different drills you will be correcting their their behaviors as they're doing that you know even from don't use your hands use your feet 
just like the Bible is good for rebuking and correcting us, that's what I'm going to help you with as well because I want you to be a good soccer player. Uh, there's endless possibilities on how to incorporate these verses into the practice. I encourage you to look at that verse ahead of time and maybe plan out what you're going to teach and some phrases you can use to reinforce that throughout the practice. Uh, but that is the first part to be in captain. That's the most important part of our league. Make sure it happens. Uh, please make sure it happens. Um, I usually have my booklet around if you forget yours. Um, but I will also know if you forget yours because I'll find it on the field or in the bathroom or in the office. Uh, so please uh, take that with you. And if you forgot it in your car, uh, that's fine. But grab mine and make sure you are doing the devotional time at practice. Uh, it's very important that they do that. One more thing with the captain is that at the end of the year, you will pick an overall captain for the season for the team. They will have to have been captain at least once before. And uh, I think a great requirement to put on that to be the overall captain is that they've memorized all three verses. Uh, we try to make this something that they can reach for and achieve. It is possible at every age level. And uh, the overall captain for the team will get to keep the armband. We'll, we'll award it to them at the award ceremony at the end of the season. And they will also get a free scholarship uh, for any upcoming season, basketball or soccer. So we want this to be a good thing that they can they can reach for. And the kids that do get this uh, do stand out amongst their peers. They do stand out amongst in our league and really become um, our, our prominent players, the ones we're, we're most excited about, um, the ones that really take the season to heart and our league to heart. Now, as a coach, uh, I know I've struggled with this before. Many other coaches have struggled with this as a parent of someone on your team. Um, if your kid is the only one memorizing the Bible verse, that's okay for them to be captain. Um, they're putting in the work to memorize that Bible verse. Also, if you know that they are doing above and beyond, and some of the things are going to come easily because they're going to be with you before practice to help out with things, but they're going to be on time because you have to be early to practice. It's okay to make them captain. Um, don't punish your kids just because they're, they're good at doing this. They're helpful. Um, but as you have other players in the team that start reaching those things, you can spread it out a little bit. Also, do not feel that everyone has to be captain. There will be some players who will not memorize any Bible verses. Um, they can't be captain if they don't do that. And you can stress that to them, those first practices. There will also be times when you've got lots of people that are memorizing these Bible verses and you are really um, upping the standards to be captain. Some kids are going to rise to it. Others aren't. Um, communicate with them what you're looking for in a captain and they will, they will, they will follow that. It's also a great tool to use in your arsenal for kids that struggle paying attention and like to um, wander and, and do things you're telling them not to do and not listen when you're giving instructions. Use this as a tool to get them back on track. You know, tell them you're always watching, you're always looking for the next captain. Um, these are the qualities, the character qualities you're looking for in the captain. These are the behavior traits you're looking for in a captain. Use that. Um, as, as a parent, I know we use rewards uh, to help reinforce positive behavior. Uh, feel free to use that as well and, and as, as a coach in this league. Uh, so those are two of the basic things. Um, you'll see there right before the devotional section, your first practice, you're going to tell them what you're going to be doing in subsequent, subsequent practices during that time. So you're going to tell them, you know, we're going to sit down and we're going to do a Bible study next week. We're going to be teaching you a verse next week. It's a very important part of our league. I want you to memorize these verses. Next week you will get a card with the verse on it. And this is how you become a captain. And just share with them these things. It's also a great time to share with them uh, your rules as a coach. What things you expect. What you want them to do when you blow the whistle. Uh, what you want them to do when you're sitting together and stretching. Uh, what you want them to do um, on game days and on practices. Tell them where the bathrooms are. Tell them where the water fountain is. Um, just a few things on that. Um, the bathrooms are available in the, in the school. That back door will be open. And uh, the water fountain is in the building. Although I encourage you and all your players to bring water for the games 
so they can be with you on the bench and the kids aren't running into the school every water break to get water. So those are some of the basics uh, for this coaching session. I'm going to do some more of these videos outside uh, in the coming days and, and maybe week, depending on the weather, and show you some more practical steps on how to teach soccer and uh, a little more of the um, dynamics of our fields and our program here. So you can understand a little bit more since I can't physically show you. Although you are welcome to come by the property anytime. Uh, and if you want to bring your kids out and play soccer out there and there's no one else, you can maintain your six feet of distance from other families. That's fine. Um, you can see the setup we have. We don't have all the lines on the field yet, uh, but we're, we're getting there uh, very quickly. You can have some idea of what to expect, where your practice will be, where your parents can park, uh, where the equipment is, and I'll show you that in another video and what you'll need for the season. So I want to thank you. I know there was a lot of information. Uh, please read through your packet. I will try to explain if you have questions, please ask, especially if this is your first season with us. Substitutions can be a little strange and um, difficult to grasp. Uh, it will click eventually and make sense. But please ask questions um, about anything you might have with this. I've been coaching a long time, all ages from three-year-olds all the way up to uh, um, high school varsity. So um, I'd be happy to help with anything I can with that. I'm also the pastor here, if you didn't know, at Oakfield Baptist Church. And um, I look forward to seeing you all soon. Hopefully this schedule will be set in place soon. You also have a schedule in the back of your pack, and I didn't mention that. Um, when games will be, what time games will be, and what field games will be played on throughout the season. You'll see your team name there. Uh, there's no dates yet because we don't know when our season will start. But as soon as uh, we know those, uh, we will communicate that to all the players. So thank you for doing this again. Um, ask questions if you have questions. This is my first time doing this virtually. Um, so if you have feedback on that and have questions I can answer, be glad to do that. I will be emailing out this video and the other videos when I make them to the coaches so you can see them and be preparing for the season as soon as we get ready to do this. I'm excited. It's our biggest season yet, about 130 kids, and I think it'll be good. So thank you, and I will hopefully see you soon. God bless you.